Okay, so we'll just prepare the, uh, the wires here. This is the speaker wires. And I'm just tinning the ends of the wire, make it less likely to turn into a splayed out mess here. There we go. The other wire, I had soldered a connector onto it. And I'm just going to remove the connector. For the last uh, radio, we used a connector I was able to. So I just tacked on a. So there we go. I just tacked on a, uh, a plug. So I will be doing lots of experimenting with my uh, my camera and lenses and stuff like that. So lots of stupid things are going to happen here while I'm working in terms of the camera. Maybe not being aimed quite right or falling over as I figure out how to use this particular little tiny camera. So now I don't have the plug that goes in here and I think shoving in the wires probably not the best way to do this, you know, because I don't have the plug. I just shove wires in. I mean, there's, there's, there's nothing holding it at all here. So, I could solder them on, and then I've got to worry about the speakers everywhere I go. Or just clip lead them, but that's four clip leads, unless there's a common ground. Yeah, there's a common ground, so three clip leads. Let's do that. We'll do three clip leads on this. Three of my scarce clip leads here. So one off the ground. Two channel, two channel lines, the left and a right. You know, when I was working on my uh, cameras, there I was doing a lot of experimenting on them. Very little of it got posted. Some of it got posted by accident. Some of you may have seen bits and pieces of it. Um, but uh, I did an awful lot of experimenting over the last couple of days to to resolve that this camera is the best way to go. But there's still one more step I need to take. And I need to use a separate external microphone. And I have a little plan in mind. I'll probably work on that later today. To give me independent control of the microphone volume. Because I don't really have that right now. And a chance to monitor what the microphone's picking up by wearing headphones, which is ooh, big thumbs up here in this kind of this kind of effort. So uh, and a better microphone too. So hopefully later today I will have a really nice setup in here for sound and video. But I think I've said that before and it didn't work out. So I better not be repeating myself too much. So we have the speakers connected now. What else will we have to do before turning this on? Well, we don't need to connect an antenna. And we don't really need to do anything else, I don't think, except figure out which vol which controls the volume. Which I'm going to want to turn down. Now, this looks like a tone control here because of all the capacitors all around it. So we'll leave that one. Well, just in case, I'll leave it turned down, what I believe is down. So there's some capacitors on this control, too. So, you know, hard to say for sure. All turned down, though. This is probably a... I don't know what this is. This is a, maybe a 
maybe a balance control here, I'm not sure. And this is the band switch up here. Band switch and on off. <laughs> no, it wouldn't go very far. It just started falling. So, so we'll put this on the extreme left. That's scary. Eh? <laughs> Actually, he's gonna go, but he can't go because there's great big transformers here. Let's steady this up a little bit. Just shim it underneath the. That's a little better. Now it won't give me a heart attack. If it starts to tip. So, uh, I think we're ready to turn this guy on. And I think I really want to set it down. Well, maybe not. What we'll do is, we'll put the speakers right on the carousel with it. Not just around behind here. way when I rotate it, the speakers, the wires, the clip leads, everything will go around and around, hopefully. And I won't have this problem of reorient reorienting the radio with a dozen things hanging off of it. So there we go. So we should be able to do that. Great. Let's get this light somewhere where we can see it too. Um, because that's a good reminder that the radio is on or, or not on. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's, uh, tubes are in place. I mean, we have a report of its behavior. So if somebody's turned this on recently. So we will turn it on, though, with current restriction. That's this control up here. When I flip it down, it engages my current restriction light bulbs. And when I flip it up, the whole power uh, is fed to the radio. And I have a master control also, it's just over here. Just over here. So with this one off, nothing happens. And that's why I was able to flip the uh, selector switch up and down, not worry about it. Let's plug the radio in. Okay. And you should. Keep your eye on. Keep your eye on. This meter here. This is why I'm having a great. What's it seeing there? Oh, it's this light. There we go. So keep your eye on this meter. This shows the line volts uh, being supplied to the radio. So uh, with the radio turned off, we'll engage the power here. Oh, the radio is not turned off. The radio is on. You can tell from this meter's behavior. So that on-off switch, hmm. I thought I left it off. Oh boy, I hope I left the volume down. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready for nothing. I don't hear any sound. I sure hope those were the speakers. There was always a chance that that's not the speaker output. And that's really the input to the uh, phono amp and the speakers. You know what? That is wrong. I've done it wrong here. So switch off. Dave, what a dummy. Should have been able to figure this out. This connector is close to the input circuitry of the radio. And this other connector down here is close to the output tubes. Mm. So, <laughs> hello. Let's use our head here. And the connector, I did, you know, I just didn't make an observation there. It's stupid of me. So, same thing though. Three wires will do it. So, here's the ground lead. And one channel. 
and to other channel. Okay, ready for an exciting time again. Now let's see if this is really this is Oh. I may not have had this turned off. Well, that's as far as it goes. So I think that's off now. So once again we will apply power. No, it's not off. Hmm. Isn't that odd? Yeah, you know, I don't have the cabinet to look at the uh, labeling on the switch positions. Was there another on-off switch on here? I don't see one. Curious. Okay, so I see some plate current starting to flow here. The voltmeter drops slowly. Don't hear a sound. I don't smell anything. I don't see any smoke. It's always a good thing. Let's turn up some volume here. Hmm. What would that be? Let's try this one. I heard nothing. Let's try this one. Not a thing. How about this one? Oh. I hear something with that one. They're a little static. Well, if this switch is in the off position, then the radio may not be in an operating position in terms of the switch. Normally when it's like this, it's off. So maybe the switch is broken, it's on permanently, so it's on in a ridiculous position. So let's make sure all these are turned down again. Okay, now, now it's in a sensible position. Let's see what we get this time. Yeah, sensible to me, that may not mean much. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. It could be bass, treble, volume, band, or selector. I hear nothing. So when we're on, the, we're running at about 110 volts supply. That should be plenty. Uh, power to operate this thing. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit reduced from what's available. I can probably put 125 volts on this. But no, no reason to, no advantage to that. So it certainly has enough voltage. I see the uh, panel light's not lighting, so let's, let's take a look, see if we can fix that situation there. Says Phillips six slash two. I don't know what that means. Six slash two. Six slash two. Six volts. You may think it's a silly thing to worry about a panel light, but in some radios, the panel light is uh, especially like those five tube tabletop radios. The panel light plays a really important role in the radio, and when the panel light burns out, the radio actually suffers. Uh, during startup. So here's the voltage point here. The voltage point, yes, this is ready. And 6.3 is the voltage, not surprisingly. 6.3 volt light, please. So there we go. That's going to keep us aware of the radio being switched on. Because I need that kind of help. <laughs> Actually, I was thinking, literally thinking of having a, a flashing red light going whenever the power's on over here, just to keep me mindful that power is on. So, 
Well, what are we going to do here? We have no sound coming out at all. I don't think anything at all is coming out of here. It's what I'm doing, and I'm putting the speaker right up against my ear here. Oh, no, there's definitely noise in there. I'm just trying to figure out which one's volume for sure. <laughs> okay, we'll take a different approach now. We'll say, okay, let's try and get this set to phono input. And then if we supply a phono signal uh, into the set, uh, just by touching. Oh, there we are right there. Bingo. Okay, now we'll figure out volume. Okay, that's tone. This is also, these are two tone controls. So this has got to be the volume here. Not too impressive, is it? And one channel, one channel, nothing, just as uh, reported. Okay, well, that's that's a pretty good start, actually. We're getting somewhere now. Um, let's go another step, another step on here and see if we can engage the radio. Okay, that's another spot. Phone's off. Radio's on. No, it isn't. <laughs> I don't want to tune the radio. This is the problem because of that part that's uh, that's in difficulty back there. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's go another. Let's go another step here. That's the last step. So. Phono, FM, AM, something like that. Oh boy. Okay, let's stick an antenna on it at this point. Let's see what we can get out of it. First, we'll just uh, we'll just stick a piece of wire on it. I think we're on FM based on what I can hear in here. Open into the clip leads flying around. I don't want that happening. Let me hold this. Oh, that's pretty good. There we go. That's the, uh, that was, okay, I, don't, <laughs> I was going to hold this up to the microphone. Clearly, I don't have to do that. That was the 12AX7 being moved. I think it's a 12AX7. And I can hear both channels reacting. How much you want to bet it was bad tube, bad tube contact is restricting the output. So, you know what I got to do? I got to get a, uh, some kind of signal to feed into here so we can, um, really uh, hear hear what's coming out so now where's my where's my oh so helpful long clip cords it must be in my office just don't go away I'll be right back And a couple more things. Uh, Tuesday night, that's tomorrow night, 
Uh, I'll be on live on Hangouts at 7 o'clock with uh, Scotty TR, and we'll be looking at that 1920s radio, the one where we got the first stage working last week. And this week we're going to focus on the second stage. I only have two functioning tubes anyway, so we can only do two stages for now. But we'll try to get the second stage uh, operating. And uh, that'll be our goal tonight at 7 o'clock on Hangouts. Hey, look for Jim's Radio Shop. That's how I'm going to to deal with it. So uh, let's put an input into the radio. Okay, not too much here. First we need to make sure that there's some signal at the end of these wires. And I would do that by disconnecting one speaker temporarily. There you hear it. I hope you heard it. I heard it. So we know there's signal here. Put the speaker's back on. That's a fairly high level signal, so we're going to turn it way down. In fact, we're going to turn it to zero. I'm going to assume I can ground one side to the chassis. I assume that. Why don't we go on the proper grounding spot here? Okay, and we'll feed in signal here. We'll turn this back to where we think it's phono. And we will apply the signal. So very, very poor amplification. You know what, this this says again the 12AX7 is not doing its job here. We're also still on restricted voltage, but uh, we're at about 107 volts. All right, it should be enough, you know. I mean, if I turned it up a little higher voltage, a little higher plate voltage, a little higher everything, a little louder, but not, not to overcome the problem that we're at low output right now. That's a pretty good input signal. So that's one channel. Seem to be fading away. And I, I wonder if there's leaky capacitors here. Uh, I get a little more signal in there. Okay, we'll try the other channel. There it is. Okay, so the one channel not working problem pretty certain to have been just the loose or poorly contacting 12AX72, which is still quite noisy. Okay, output tubes feel fairly cool. Um, in some cases you can have a very heavy plate current. Uh, it's called quiescent plate current. At get a pretty hot tube on the output not even really tell from the way the amps are operating it's a, kind of like a, a problem not obvious meanwhile it's burning out your output tubes that would be from leaky capacitors on the grid or something like that well there it is working huh. now is it working the way it's supposed to boy that's hard to tell that's really hard to tell uh, in terms of the amplifier Sounds really weak to me. I mean, this is this is full volume, and the volume's not even going away when I fully turn it down. So exactly what's happening here, I'm not sure. Let's let's see how it does with the frequency response here. My little speakers aren't very good for this. Yeah, nothing obviously wrong with the frequency response on it. Well, I think we'll, uh, I think we'll stop at this point, think a little more, and, uh, 
to come back at it. Hopefully I can find a schematic for this guy. But at this point, I'm not sure anything's seriously wrong. Maybe we'll do some tube testing. We'll test the 12AX7 and see how that's uh, standing up. We'll just pop another one in. That's another way, too. Goodness knows, I probably have a few in my office. If you, uh, if you saw my, uh, my crazy... Hey, and I'm going to show you a little bit of that tube collection as I'm working on it. I'm going to show you a bit right now. Just don't go away. Just hang on. You gotta understand, okay? These are uh, boxes, mysterious, unopened boxes. I've never really looked in until recently because these are the uh, tubes that have never been sorted and introduced into the regular stock in the shop I'm at once a week. So these are mystery tubes. But take a look at this. Is this the way? Is this the way you would store your tubes? Yes, those are tubes stored well not just tubes other bits and pieces here in glass containers I, I don't know I don't know what what was being thought here but this is this is not a good way to do it that's for sure so anyway that's that's a small part of what I'm up against so I'm sure I'll be showing you lots more of that stuff as we go along here so Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next video as we proceed with this radio and uh, get it working properly. Thanks for watching.